seconds remaining. Bogans win at the close. It doesn't double overtime. They say Cats have nine lives. The Kentucky <laughs> Wildcats have eight left. Yesterday resounded with close calls. Today, will the higher seeds once again prevail? Or will they stumble and be forced to step aside? Again, everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome to the road to the Final Four and to CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Today, 16 more teams with hard work, determination, and maybe just a little help from a leprechaun or two will advance to the second round. One step closer to that pot of gold at the end of the March Madness rainbow, the Final Four. I am joined once again by my lucky charm, my partner Clark Kellogg. And if we can have another day like we had yesterday, I think we'll be doing okay. Exciting day. All of your higher seeds prevailed other than Gonzaga knocking off Louisville. I think you'll see much the same. I'm anxious to see how the teams that watched yesterday and that will be playing today, how they handle and control their emotions and try to get their ticket punch to re-enter the big dance come Sunday. All right, Clark. Uh, we start today in Winston-Salem with the East Region matchup between the Pennsylvania Quakers and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Michael Jordan, the Ivy League version, that is, is the Quakers' go-to guard. Like his namesake, the senior wants the ball down the stretch. He leads his team in scoring at 16 points an outing. His counterpart on the Illini is freshman Frank Williams, the Big Ten Steals leader, who's connected on 35 three-pointers for the season thus far. At 12.25 Eastern Time, some of you will head up to Buffalo for the East Region contest between Seton Hall and Oregon. The Hall's leading scorer is sophomore guard Darius Lane. The six-time Big East Rookie of the Week is in range when he gets off the team bus. In contrast, Ducks senior guard Alex Scales is more comfortable driving than launching. He is the team's leading scorer. The other early game feature the South Region matchups between Louisiana and Tennessee, and UNC Wilmington takes on Cincinnati. Those games are set to tip at 12.30. Then later this afternoon, Butler against Florida, Lafayette meets Temple in the east, while in the south, UNLV meets Tulsa, and Utah State takes on the defending national champs, UConn. The defending champion comes into this tournament at number five seed, Clark. Well, since 1989, at least one 12 seed has advanced to the second round. That means that Florida and UConn have to beware, but I think both of those teams have enough firepower to handle their respective opponents today. All right, Clark, we will take a look at some of last night's highlights and nail biters, in fact, when the road to the Final Four continues right after this. Welcome back to the road to the Final Four. Last night, the West Region's second seed, St. John's, faced 15th seed Northern Arizona, and the Red Storm was nearly chopped down by the Lumberjacks. Barkley inbounding on the baseline, 13.8 to go. Postel off the dribble. Lead up! It's good! And a foul! LeVon Postel! But Northern Arizona had a chance for the win with time running down. Watch Eric Barkley of St. John's with the key steal right there to seal the Johnson, the St. John's victory, and St. John's wins at 61 to 56. Ball State against UCLA. UCLA's Earl Watson with the alley oop. He's going to find Dan Gadzurek. Look at the big fellow run the floor and finish with authority. UCLA applied two. Then Jason Capono, co-pack 10 freshman of the year, along with Jason Gardner. Going to knock down three of his 17 points in the second half there for UCLA. That put UCLA up six. They went on to win it by a score of 65-57. St. Louis at Utah. Billikens took a slim lead. Maurice Jeffers will come up with the ball and the jam. That put them up three. This was a game of tight defense and big shots. Jeff Johnson going to make the biggest right here. Fighting the shot clock off balance. Mark it up for three. That gave the Utes a two-point lead. Rick Majerus and company went on to win by three. The final was 48 to 45. And all of these close games that we saw yesterday, Clark, it has to bode well for someone the deeper they go into the tournament. I agree with you there, Greg, because you look back over history and look, take a look at the teams that have gotten to the Final Four and even, even have won a national championship. There has been a game, whether it's a first-round game, a third-round game, there has been a game where they've had to fight to survive. Maybe St. John's got their game out of the way um, last night. You know you hear a coach say, oh, I wish it was a cakewalk, but I think he'd like to see his team battle-tested a little bit before things get very tough. Being able to persevere through adverse situations within a game under this kind of pressure, I think serves you well. All right, like you and me. 
Same thing. All yeah. right. The road to the final four continues after this word from your local station. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg. We welcome you to CBS Sports' continuing coverage of the road to the Final Four. There is more first-round action coming your way today, beginning with Pennsylvania against Illinois and Seton Hall against Oregon in the East, while in the South, Louisiana meets Tennessee and UNC Wilmington takes on Cincinnati. Then, later today, Butler meets Florida, Lafayette takes on Temple in the East, while in the South, UNLV tangles with Tulsa, and Utah State goes up against UConn. As a player, Clark, would you rather play on the first day or the second day of the tournament? I think I'd rather play on the first day, get it over with, and then if you get your t ticket punch to move on, you can really relax and enjoy the nervous moments for the teams that are going to play on Friday. Whichever day you play, it beats not playing at all, doesn't it? Oh, without question. <laughs> you betcha. Coming question. up, everyone will see the tip of Penn, Illinois. Then we'll send those of you slated to see Seton Hall against Oregon to that tip at 1225. For those awaiting UNC Wilmington against Cincinnati and Louisiana against Tennessee, we'll get you to the tips of those games at 1230. Madness 2000 moves on. Enjoy the games everyone here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Microsoft, Saturn, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and by Salomon Smith Barney. Final Four begins in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Let's fire up the East region on the home floor of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, where we begin today with the Ivy League champion, Penn Quakers, against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Four games here today. We lead off with this one, and we end tonight with the one seed, Duke taking on Lamar. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, courtside, one of our favorite days of the year here, partner. Fired up, James. And we've got Michael Jordan here in game one leading the pin attack. Appropriate North Carolina, Michael Jordan, but a different guy, but an outstanding player. Michael Jordan was the player of the year in the Ivy League this year. First team all Ivy League the last two years. Great crossover dribble, great strength, an outstanding number two guard. And when you talk about number two guards, Corey Bradford, one of the best in the country. You'll see the only way he got stopped in the Big Ten tournament when Hudson came down and hit him with that elbow. Broke his nose, but watch what determination he has. Came back, and there's that patented jump shot. He is the record holder at Illinois. Coach Fran Dunphy and in his 11th year as the pin head coach his team was in the tournament a year ago led by 11 at halftime against Florida only to fall out in Seattle to the Gators his lineup a freshman on Yick way Brown Owens strong backcourt with Langle and Jordan and for the fighting Illini McLean Lucas Johnson surging freshman cook Williams and Bradford who will not play with a mask today with that broken nose. There's Lon Kruger third time in four years he's taken Illinois to the NCAA tournament. The Quakers have first possession here. Jim a horrible toss and the Owens stole the tap. Good move on his part when he saw it was a bad toss. Michael Jordan McLean on him. McLean's got a lot of size. Jordan should have a quick disadvantage. On Nick Way, the freshman from London with an opening three. This young man, Jim, has played outstanding games against tougher opponents. You see the zone defense, two, three starting off, look for Bradford to try to find himself a hole against this zone. They're matching up very high outside. Look like they'd want to force Illinois to get the ball down inside. Look at how wide out this zone is. Cook comes up short from way outside on Yikwe, clears it for the Quakers. I love the concept by Fran Dunphy against Illinois. Illinois is going to have to go ahead and get Cook down inside or bring Griffin in the game. That zone is really wide. Dump off on Langle in the paint. A traveling violation on Owens. Penn undefeated in Ivy League play this year. 14-0 overall. Second longest win streak in the country. Utah State's win streak will be on the line today. This afternoon taking on Connecticut. Now watch this defense by Penn. They showed the zone. Now they're playing man to man the second go round here. Cook really posts up low and Owens just a silly foul. Owens on the hold. 
senior out of Audubon, New Jersey. So Penn showed the 2 3 zone, really put it out high, and then go back to a man to man. Now they're back in the zone on the out of bounds situation. See if they stay that way. Stay zone. Double up. Skip past Johnson, thought about it. Now kicks it back out to Williams. McLean, he'll take the jumper. First two for Illinois. They're going to play that zone. That's where it has to be attacked. Right at the foul line there. McLean, not a great scorer or shooter, but he took advantage of it. We saw earlier the pin win streak and early season losses against some top notch teams. And a whistle and a reach in on Illinois. Early games at Kentucky, at Auburn, at Temple, losing by only four, and at Kansas, where they were really blown off the floor. Lost by 46, but Jim, when you take a look at the Ivy League, really a two-team league this year with Princeton and Penn. So I think that was great scheduling by Fran Dunphy, realizing he had to get these guys battle-tested, even if they had to go on, uh, on the road against strong opponents. Owens with the steal, Langle might get another try. Yes, three, yes this time. Bad recovery by Illinois on the missed shot. Langle will take advantage of it. He has tremendous range. First team all Ivy League player. Good size for a two guard. Heads up play by Jeff Owens after the first Langle miss. See Johnson is filling that hole in the middle. That'll be available. Lane, wow, almost into the, into the first row. Well, if you're expecting Seton Hall or Oregon, we'll be pulling out shortly to get you to the start of that game. Or the Louisiana, Tennessee game, Carolina Wilmington against Cincinnati, all in the early set. Owens is getting good position on Cook down inside, but nobody's delivered the ball so far. Michael Jordan over Brad for three, rattles out. Well, Jim, you know, I think for Penn, you've got a lot of players on the floor that had good games against Florida last year, Langle and Jordan particularly. So it's not like they're not ready to play against quality competition. Frank Williams with a three for Illinois. Illinois, the number four seed in the East, its highest seed since 1989. A team uh, that was a number one seed and went on to the Final Four. Langle. McLean. Now battling on Nickwe for the rebound. There's McLean's versatility. Can rebound, can guard multiple players, and so far is shooting the ball well. Craig Dumble in New York. All kinds of good stuff scheduled for you today. We'll keep you updated on what happens between Illinois and Pennsylvania. But those of you ticketed to see the other first round East Region game in Buffalo between Seton Hall and Oregon, we'll send you out to Buffalo right after this. No numbers here for Jordan, and he can't catch up to it. Pennsylvania, 9,800. Student body, 18th time in the NCAA tournament. Final four team of 1979, where their journey to Salt Lake City in the Final Four really began right through the state of North Carolina. And they have never beaten, however, Illinois, and there's Cook keeping the ball over his head. Penn doing a nice job on the perimeter in the zone. Welcomes you to Buffalo, New York, the newly named HSBC Arena. First round action of the 2000 NCAA Tournament. From the East Regional, the 10th seeded Seton Hall Pirates taking on the 7th seeded Oregon Ducks. First of four games in Buffalo today on the road to the Final Four. We'll wrap it up tonight with Indiana and Pepperdine. Won't play. Hi, everybody. I and Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. Once again, great to be a part of CBS. Some of you will be leaving us shortly. Get you there for the tip times of your games. South bracket. But right now, let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Hi there, Jim. Well, obviously, one of the big stories in this game is the broken nose of Illinois' leading scorer, Corey Bradford. He's going to have surgery on that nose Monday, regardless of how Illinois 
place this weekend, but there is a reason why he's not wearing a protective face mask. On Tuesday, with the mask on, Corey fell on his face and got... Shaheen Holloway on the other side for Seton Hall. He's the catalyst for this team. They're a guard-oriented team that likes to push the ball up the floor. If he can deliver the ball to the three-point shooters and they knock him down, Seton Hall is a different team to contend with. Starting lineups for the Pirates, who finished 20 and 9 this season, 10 and 6 in the Big East. Greg Morton, Samuel Dellen. Cardinal, his son advancing with Purdue, hitting a key shot the very uh, end of that game yesterday against Dayton. That's got to be kind of tough. A father that's training one team has got a son in the tournament on another team. Of course, he's had to go up against his son many times in Illinois, and uh, so far, Brian has really taken advantage of his dad in regard to those matchups. Williams with the jumper. Finished that story on Corey Bradford when he fell on his face. It really did. It jarred him and excruciating pain. But when they went to the doctor, they said, yeah, really, the effect was you almost reset it to put it back in place. I can think of nicer ways to do that. Yeah, that's not the way you'd want to do it. Seven point run here by the Fighting Illini. Papalia in the game right now. Nice matchup that he has on Onikwe. Langle, long range three. Jim, he's getting excellent looks as Langle, and he's got to make these if Penn's going to stay in the ballgame. Even though Illinois is not a great rebounding team by Big Ten standards, they do have an advantage in this game. Turnaround goes for Marcus Griffin. Nine point run. This is Greg Dumble in New York. We'll keep you advised on what happens with Pennsylvania and Illinois, but there's other action for you folks to tend to. In the South region, some of you will go to Nashville to see UNC Wilmington making its first ever appearance in the NCAA against Cincinnati, while others will go to Birmingham for Louisiana against Tennessee. We'll get you folks to your tip-off right after this. I was under the impression that they had to be a six or higher, at least on the same level as UCLA, considering that they split with them this season and the fact that they finished higher in the Pac-10. Right, and you factor in another equation to that in the Pac-10. They finished behind Arizona and Stanford, number one seed. So Fair point. there may be an argument there for Ernie Kenton company. Seton Hall comes in as a 10 seed. And Tommy Amaker said that's pretty much where we expected it. They knew they would get an at-large bid with a 20-win season and, and a 10-6 and six Big East record, but they did not finish the year in good fashion. No, they did not. And really, it's predicated on shooting the basketball. And if, when they shoot it well, they're a different type of team. But, you know, it's an interesting point with the seedings and all. About a second or two from now, the seedings mean nothing yep. when that ball goes in the air. Oregon, the higher seed, they're in the home white. Ball in the air, and Dallenbear controls the tip for Seton Hall. We're underway from Buffalo. Volcanus playing with an injured ankle. We'll talk more about that. Right off the bat, Scales 33 guarding Holloway. Interesting matchup at the point. Seton Hall spreads the floor with Caucanus out front. Watched by Wright. Here's Holloway off penetration. And he traveled. Little step, a little anxious going through. That's the type of style, though. Expect to see Holloway do just that type of move. Push the ball, make things happen. Keeps the pressure on you from the offensive position with the point. And he will look for guys to flare to the corners and hit their shots. They have experience in the backcourt. Seton Hall with Holloway and Caucanus, both seniors, and both have waited a long time to get to this very moment. And they've been anxious a little bit with another travel. So both teams anxious at both ends of the floor offensively. But talking to Shaheen Holloway a little bit yesterday, and he just said, you know, I'm ready to play. Getting a full game down the front with Lake. The sophomore. Local product from Barlow High School in Gresham, Oregon. Called on the travel. Here's Dallimere, post-up opportunity. He is taller than Flo Hartenstein. On the outside lane. Express card. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA championship brings you in. Features two teams that have celebrated their best ever winning seasons. The University of Tennessee volunteers the number four seed. Bearcats of Cincinnati take on the upstart UNC Wilmington from the Colonial Athletic Conference. They're Patrick's Day, Aaron Gobrada, Al McGuire as James Worthy joins us. Tennessee, one of the four champions of the Southeastern Conference. Great to have you with us. Transitions and maybe a number one seed, Rolando, overlooked the Cincinnati Bearcats, and it all changed for them a week ago today. 
gets his first couple to go. A partial qualifier, so he didn't play his freshman year. There's Tallenberg coming over to help and swatting it away. You have a situation where that's one of the keys. I was talking to Tommy Amaker yesterday about this very same thing. It's the second guy in. You see the second guy right there is usually the guy gets all the flair, but the first guy, Morton, stops Smith, makes the stance defensively. That's going to allow Dallin Bear to run around and roam defensively. Shot clock at 27. Oregon gets it in. There he Smith is on a winner. It's Dallin Bear getting his second consecutive block. He puts up big numbers. He really goes after people defensively, and it gets his confidence going at the offensive end. 6-2 Pirates. Holloway falling to the floor. And once again, another travel. Notice once again, though, here's the stop again, and second man in, bang. Little tip, and as Bill Russell would say, hey, keep the ball in play, and off we go. But notice Smith, pretty good, throws the shoulders, throws the ball at you, but if there's a second guy there, it's a different look. Dallin Bear averaged over three and a half blocks per game in his freshman year at Seton Hall this season. Smith on a pump fake. Entry feed, Hartenstein. Tough shot, and it comes off the rim. Dallin Bear down the floor. There's Morton filling the lane. Aggressive to the goal. Offensive foul. There's a situation where Smith played two players. Dallin Bear got down the floor in a hurry. Tommy Amaker not really arguing with the call. Watch Dallin Bear. He comes through. He takes a player with him. Now watch Smith step in second. Boom. That's a terrific defensive play right there because he had to take Dallin Bear out of the play first and then pick up the charging call. So wave off the basket as Wright gets it across for Oregon. Both teams like the pressure to perimeter. Open look, Scales in and out, and Dallin there with a rebound. Scales shot 34% from three-point range this season. Missed that one, and the Hall turns it over quickly. Nice step up there by Scales just then to react. The player looks over his shoulder, and you start your feet moving before you put the ball down. A good call and a quick catch by the officials just then. Choppy start for both teams. Fourth Seton Hall turnover. The Pirates, two of three from the field. They lead at 6-2. A pair of three-pointers. Nice matchup at the point. Holloway pretty good defensively. We'll stick with his man. Jones, post-up opportunity. Wright pulls the trigger on a three. Off the rim, and Morton able to save for Holloway. Let's see if Holloway tries to break people down in the sets when he gets the ball back, not when he starts it. Pirates don't look to push it. They'll settle into the half-court set. Morton got tied up. A.D. Smith and Hartenstein came over late. Oregon doing just what they do well. Ducks one of six. Jones high off the window, running out. And the tap in, A.D. Smith coming over on the weak side. So there will be some lanes. With Dallin Bear floating around defensively, the Ducks should be able to get some action. Nice cut, Caucasus, and Morton found it. One of the things you can do against that pressure on the perimeter, look back door. 8-4, Pirates. Just about four minutes gone by here in the first half. Scales on a crossover. From fake from Jones and knocked away. But three or four times already, Seton Hall as a team has left their feet. Guys guarding the basketball. It could pose some problems as you go through this game. They have to stay down, not bite the, into the ball fake. Pull up jump. Holloway knocks it down. I've seen him play so many times on him. When he is stroking his shot and that pull up jumper, he's a different guy from a mental standpoint. Five points for the co captain, Shaheen Holloway. And a foul call. Darius Lane. He will pick up his first. Breaking the action, 15-39 to play. First half, 10-4, Seton Hall out front early. At 11, as Black inside has it stripped away by Billy Jones, and here come the Cajuns. And there's the physical defense that we talked about at the beginning of this game. They don't allow you to pass the ball easily around the perimeter, and when it goes inside, they do a pretty good job of collapsing down, disrupting the offense. Harmon is their outside three-point shooter. Takes it inside to Thomas. Thomas, short. Smith with a rebound. Scrambles in the lane and finally controls. And then takes too many. He had uh, terminated the dribble, took the extra step. Well, Brett Smith, uh, you know, from Australia, he's a defender, a hustle player, does a lot of the intangibles, and that's what it's going to take for the Raging Cajuns to stay in this ball game. Loose ball, still second opportunities. Minute and a half into this uh, opening game, and each team looking for its first point. So often the case on the first round. Low scoring games. Yarbrough, backhanded pass, and it was well off the mark. Thomas sends it ahead. 
Pass inside to Thomas, and Louisiana has the first goal of the game. Good ball movement around the perimeter. He didn't hit it inside with Lonnie Thomas, a junior. He's a team leader. He's a double-double guy, and once he gets going inside, he has great footwork. Yarbrough from outside with a three-point answer. Tennessee, three to two. Last five games, Dick, he's been shooting 50% from the field, 8 of 20 from three point in the last five games. So Yarbrough, the most versatile player over there for the Volunteers. Harmon. Gray comes outside, and then it's inside to Thomas. Back to Smith. Stripped away, but he gets it back. Double team foot pass outside to Gray, and he has it knocked out of bounds by Yarbrough. Well, Smith is getting the ball in a threat area. He's getting it about 14 feet from the basket. It's almost one dribble from the basketball. And uh, he's a player that, that might be able to loosen things up inside. Six seconds on the shot clock, so Harmon fires. And rebound to Isaiah Victor of Tennessee. Harris with the balls leading 3-2. Yarbrough well outside. And Brett Smith with a rebound. Harmon feeds ahead. And Billy Jones, number 13, has it taken away. Victor with a steal for Tennessee. Well, we talked about how important it was to get Tony Harris involved. Y'all broke the score, but you've got to get Tony Harris some open shots early in order to get the some early points. And Yarbrough's fired three times, and Harris has a look of frustration on his face as he goes back on defense. Hey, when am I going to get my turn? And a whistle underneath and a foul, or is it a lane violation? It's a foul against the Ragin' Cajuns. Number 52, Reggie DeGray, the junior from Leesville, Louisiana. Number 55, Charles Hathaway makes his first appearance for Tennessee, the 6'10 junior from Nashville. Hathaway at 6'10, he really doesn't have any offensive skills of yet. Big body, good shot blocker, gets in the way, but Tony Harris, Jerry Green, as soon as the ball leaves Tony Harris's hands, he's trying to deny him the basketball back, making it very difficult for a second option. Higgins uh, with a three-pointer, and John Higgins, who shoots rarely, averaging just six a game, and the Vols with a pair of trays have a 6-2 advantage. He's kind of forced into the lineup. He's inconsistent as a shooter, but once he gets going, he's hot. Right here. And a blocking foul. Actually, an illegal screen against uh, Lafayette as we have our first timeout. Just over four minutes played. Tennessee with a four-point lead. Kapitanovic needs some help. He'll go back out. Langle, last touch by Harrington. 12 on the shot clock. Jim, I'm going to make a statement. I don't know if it's true, but I'm just thinking around the country. I don't know if anybody has a better second five than does Illinois. Well, you know, they don't put anybody on the floor. That's not a pretty good Division I basketball player. Lango baseliner short. He's having a tough day from the field. Bradford hasn't really gotten on track. There he puts up a three that really wasn't necessary. With this kind of a working margin, 10 points, they should go inside to cook, keep the pressure on Penn. You know, the three fouls on short all came in a 39-second span. But Jim, they were just reach fouls defensively. No charge fouls involved in that bunch at all. So uh, just some tough calls. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let's see what they can do. They were down. The score remains 18-8. Down 10 when Jordan goes out with 11 minutes of change to go in the first half. We talked about the differential in the games that they had of common opponents. Penn State being one that uh, Penn lost to by four. And, uh, and there you have a situation where Illinois has beaten Penn State three times that they played this year. Owens for help. Nikwe. Nice Johnson fouled on the way up. This young man's going to be an outstanding player. Cook commits oh, his first. You think of all the great players that played at Penn and back in the early 70s when they were truly an outstanding team. Here we see tournament. Auburn, Kentucky, LSU, SEC looking good there, Jim. Big Ten also undefeated day one. Conference USA is struggling. struggling. Yeah, they really are. Got hammered in the NIT and then uh, Louisville losing there. But not that big an upset. You know, you're talking about a tournament-tested club in Gonzaga. 
played an outstanding uh, schedule. Louisville, a team that played extremely good basketball this year at home, but had their problems on the road. Obviously, everything neutral sites in regard to NCAA tournament play. On Nick Way, gets them both. Conference USA has lost six out of six first round games, four of them coming in the NIT, two in the tournament. Well, we'll see if that holds true with their number one team, Cincinnati, which is not going to be the same team that they had in the regular season, but uh, obviously still a very potent team. And there you see Penn going back to the 2 3 zone. Even Williams wide open. He said, I have to take it. So he knocks down the three. We'll see uh, DePaul out of Conference USA here tonight against Kansas, which might be really uh, on paper the most interesting first round matchup in the tournament, Kansas DePaul. Eight, nine games tonight. Great steal from behind. Archibong was driving baseline. How about those hands by Williams? Got it from behind. And Archibong had him beat. Subs for the Quakers. Owens and Flatsky come in. Kapitanovich and Brown to the bench. Well, you can see what's the problem now with Jordan out of there. Langle is required with that club they had on the floor to be the point guard. He's really going to have trouble ball handling against the Bradford or Williams. Langle, all Ivy, has hit only one of six from the field. And he had good looks early in the ball game, getting nothing now. Flatsky with a three, short. Good Archibald. football. Steps in, stole it away. Williams reached in. Up ahead to McLean. Flatsky defending. McLean followed up. No. How about Griffin? Hustling down the court. That's off Flatsky's foot. Penn got careless on the rebound after a hard fought stand. McLean probably would have been better off, even though he had a size advantage on that break, to hold up and wait for the trailer because Griffin was coming right behind him and would have had an easy finish. Brown comes back. McLean seldom makes judgment mistakes. No, he's a very unselfish basketball player, and I just think that he felt he had such an overwhelming advantage on Klatsky, just was going to go over it. Son of a coach, his father Wayne. Head coach at Peoria Emanuel. Williams with another three. He is off to some start here. 11 for the freshman from Peoria who played for Coach Wayne McLean. Well, see, in this kind of game, Williams can just be a regular player, a two guard. He doesn't have to be the point guard, and he enjoys that particular role. Archibong underneath needs help. Out to Brown, short. Brown tips it out, but it's all Illinois. Johnson. Back in the hands of Bradford. Ooh, Klatsky reaches in it. for the steal. Two on two. What will he do? He, he palmed the ball. Spins Owens on the jam. He palmed the ball and got away with it. Referee looking right at it. He just held it and froze the defense. It'll only show up as a steal and an assist in the book. Yeah, they go back to the 2 3 zone, but the way Williams is shooting in Bradford, that zone could have problems handling these two. Boy, McLean's showing a couple of tough picks out there. Oh, he will. Right into the chest of Klatsky. Bounces it in, Griffin, and one. High school teammates know how to find each other. You've got three of them right out there Williams and McLean and Griffin. And it went one, two, three, finish. Here we see the great pass. Look at Griffin looking right into his hands. Beautiful. And then he just goes above everybody. All teammates again playing for coach Wayne McLean. Uh, this is a big gamble now by Fran Dunphy. Well, Michael Jordan, huh? Back into the ball game with three fouls on him. 7.57 to go. He has got to be careful. So he's set for a little more than three minutes. Illinois had 12 points off the bench. And off the ball, an offensive foul. It'll go against the big fellow, Kozinets. Well, that Kozinets, number 55, as uh, Ryan Fletcher got in position to get that foul. That's a great play, though, by Ryan Fletcher. He understands that Kozinets is a big, strong dude that's going to come right at him on the post. So what does he do? Gets down there, establishes himself in the position, and takes the blow right on. This gets Kozinets to think a little bit, and also he gets an opportunity now to think while he's on the bench. His coach has taken him, decided to take him out of the game. A lot of times, too, the players understand, particularly those that come from the inner city and in the United States, you get a foreign player out there, 
uh, flop a few times, and there's going to be a, a feeling that obviously he's fouling. And, uh, Jerry Wainwright talked to us about that yesterday. There's Fletcher on the offensive glass again. Cincinnati just dominating down low. Exactly, and this is what we're talking about, though. They had a week to try to prepare themselves and get a chance for players to step up, and we all both believe that Fletcher is a guy who has multi-talents, and you just showed you one of them by the rebounding he just applied. Well, there's the first foul against Michael fighting through a pick from Victor Ebong, trying to follow Brett Lizard for a three-point shot. Well, this is exactly what we need, what they needed, especially with Kenyon Martin out. Now, you can see Fletcher battling. He's a big, strong kid who can apply himself on the inside. They showed you right there what he's capable of doing. Fletcher takes a seat. And you see the rebounding margin, 10 to 5. Cincinnati out to the quick lead. This is a, well, we're very early in the game, but mentally for a 15 seed, this is a pretty big possession for the Seahawks. Well, it's a tough application simply because they have certain people who are going to be able to score. And yet another offensive foul. That's not at all what uh, Jerry Wainwright needed early on, a quick whistle. He needs a looser whistle, particularly down low for his smaller team to hang in there. Very much so. He needs some people to be able to score. He needs people to be able to put the ball in the hole. Right now with, with, with Perrin and also with, with Blizzard, he only has two. Once the ball moves out of their hands, though, the ball stops and everything stands still, and those two players have to apply themselves again. Makes it very difficult for any offensive transition. Logan, nice crossover move, but again, on the offensive glass. This time it's saved by Stuart Hare. There's Blizzard. He's only launched one shot so far. Here's Hare for three. Too strong. One and done for UNC Wilmington. Another steal. This one by Blizzard, but he was on the end line. It'll be controlled to Cincinnati. Seahawks have gone stone cold. Seton Hall leading 11.50 to play here. First half, East Region, first of four games today in Buffalo. And the Seton Hall Pirates playing their style. It's Oregon that's had a tough time getting into the flow. They're trying to get their legs going. Oregon pushing the ball up the floor, make some things happen. But both of these teams are similar on paper. They're guard-driven, three guards on each squad. Right now, the better play from the shooting standpoint of Seton Hall, six of eight from the floor from their backcourt is the difference. They have to get scales on track. He averaged 16 points per game this season. He has run so far. Nearly nine minutes gone by. How about some touches to begin with, right? Jones in some traffic, raising the rim. Out of bounds, last touch, Oregon. Seton Hall, a team that will defend on the perimeter once again. And Dallin Bear back into the basketball game, a presence defensively. Oregon 33% from the field. At Seton Hall at 60%. Gokanis outside for Sean. Here's Gokanis on a spin move to the rim. The floater, no. Yeah, down there on the right and missed him also. Brought a lot of guys to the middle of the floor with him on the spin. In transition. Scales, baseline drive, and a whistle stops play as he made his move to the rim. All the way with the grab on the baseline. Right, pretty sh shifty with the basketball also. It's a nice matchup at the point guard position. Microsoft Databank, Oregon defeated Ohio State in the first NCAA tournament final. Three Oregon players scored in double digits. John Dick, the leading scorer, with 13 points, taking you all the way back. 1939. There's Scales trying to make his move. Dallin Bear again didn't get the block but gets a hurry, gets a, an alteration, if you will, down deep. And that's one of the things that really goes unnoticed in this game, how a big fellow will make you think about your shot. It's really a factor with Dallin Bear on the floor. And Scales is now 0 for 3 from the field. We approach the midway point of the first half. And a foul called. Anthony Norwood tried to split in between Caucasus. And he got tagged with a personal. Monday on CBS, if your parents lived right across the street, how far would you go to stop them from always hanging out at your place? You won't believe what Ray does to get his parents a social life on an all-new Everybody Loves Raymond. Monday on CBS. Here's Gawkanis looking for Dallin there. Matched up with Hartenstein. Pretty good pressure again on the perimeter. 
Caucane is using the screen set by Morton. And down there with a tap. Going to wave that one off in the cylinder. Volcano is putting it on the floor. Dallin Bear rotating. Watch down the middle of the floor. Here comes Dallin Bear right there. Now watch the basketball stop. So clearly a good call from the officials. Great drive by Volcano. Gets defensively everybody moving towards him. Just a little too quick. See, I never had that problem. So it's never over the over the rim. I would have caught that on the floor. You had the problem missing the initial <laughs> shot. That too. That was another problem. Here's Wright on an entry feed. Gracie, quickness, tip it away. Holloway, two on two, and he got bumped as Darius Wright came over and got in between Holloway and the rim. And Wright is one of those players defensively. He got back quickly against Holloway, but really at a disadvantage once Holloway got the basketball and had the ball on the open floor. Guard going deep against another guard. It's not fair when you have that kind of speed. Wright picks up his first 13 foul on Oregon. Lane fading away. Doesn't get the roll. Knocked out of bounds. And it's going the other way. This is what the region looks like here in Buffalo. The first of four games coming up. Temple and Lafayette. Tip time approximately 2.47 later tonight. Hofstra, Oklahoma State, Indiana, and Pepperdine. Rest of the East, Duke is the top seed. And a lot of question marks as to whether or not Temple deserve to be a number two or a number one and if they are indeed a two which they are did they belong in the same region as Duke you know what's interesting about that is my feeling on it sooner or later you're going to find out the answer to that question one in one situation Bracy missing on the first but they get the offensive board scans they needed that three pointer finally wakes it up gets one to go down for him, gets a little rhythm now we'll see if Oregon's going to be a different team at the offensive end with scales involved a little bit. 20 to 18. Holloway pull up pop is good. Quickness again off the top of the screen. A little high set for Shaheen Holloway. A tough defender. Not really known for knocking the shots down the first three years. Scales can't get it to go for three and Hartenstein tracks it down in the corner. Interesting how he got the shot up next time down the floor. Here's a crossover guarded by Caucatus. Bracey will put it on the floor. Wild shot. Hartenstein able to pick it up and knocked away off the Hartenstein miss. It's Dallin Bear again. The factor of having a big fella roaming around down low has affected Oregon when they've gotten the ball down low. Even Smith has scored, but no one else really has been a factor. Wright could not control it out of bounds. The East region looks like this with Duke and Lamar in a first round matchup. Illinois, Pennsylvania playing as we speak. Florida Butler and Kansas against DePaul. That's a tremendous first round matchup as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, you have a situation there, everybody going in. Your point is well taken with Duke and Temple in the same. There's a cut. Holloway and a blocking foul call. Three times we have seen Seton Hall take advantage of the pressure by Oregon out front. And here comes Holloway right at it. Defensively a little late with the rotation. Hartenstein down deep. It's a good thought process, but once again, for Ernie Kent, his team a step slow. Ernie Kent, what a week it has been for him. He lost his father on Friday of last week, passing away in Chicago. He traveled with his family to the Windy City and then made his trip here to Buffalo. But in speaking with Ernie, he said that He's tried to keep it away from the team. He also said it's something that is going to hit him very hard once this tournament is over. Very class act gentleman right there, too. I mean, the way he's approaching it, you can only understand what he's going through if you've experienced what he's going through in terms of a loss. In a situation where putting, trying to put it beside the team is just an important way to go about it. And it really says a lot about the man. Seton Hall up by six, under nine minutes to play in the first half. Anthony Norwood off of penetration. Good help side defense from Seton Hall. Smith on a pump fake. The floater. Swatted by Dallin Bear, but that's goaltending. It's pretty to watch with that ball clearly down on the way down. Smith with some pretty good ball fakes. Gets by, and now watch a little floater down, but under the basket, so you know that one's going to go the opposite way. Smith's so smart. I mean, you, you usually don't see your forwards doing that. You see the guards coming down the lane and really going up and doing a little flip over the big guy. 91-inch wingspan. Lane comes up short, follows his own shot. So aggressive. 
And Darius Lane would not give up on the play. And he's sensing that his shot is not going down. That's why he's tracking the basketball for his offensive opportunities. Five points for Lane. Smith lines it up and connects a three. And he steps away. A little step away system. Hey, you going to block a shot down low? Come on out here, big fella. Let's see if he can do it from the three-point range defensively. 11 points for the fifth-year senior from Eugene, Oregon. Here's Wilkins putting it on the floor, defended by Smith. 26-23, Pirates. Wilkins, mini hook, short. Notice the lack of offensive rebounding opportunities for Seton Hall. Darius Wright, pull-up jumper inside the arc, and it's rebounded by Delambert. He'll clear it for Holloway. One of the things Tommy Amico wanted to do in this game was hit the offensive glass. Cross court, now it's Lane, a three. Off the rim. Oregon trying to save it, and they do. A very good effort by Scales. Two players from Seton Hall just then kind of laid back, thinking that ball was going to make it out of bounds and retain or regain the possession on it. We approach seven minutes to play in the first half. Three-point Seton Hall edge. Here's Smith in a matchup with Wilkins. Back in by Hartenstein. Drop step, count it. Able to use the straight down low. Very good position. Not much of a score, but when he does get the basketball down there, he has the ability to use that body. That's the one week that the Dallin Bear has is with the lack of strength. Can you imagine if he puts on 25 pounds of muscle over the course of his career? Lane had it blocked from the outside. And three free throws will be coming. The foul called on Norwood. Norwood coming around the corner was on the right side of the shooter, so you have an opportunity to get a hand up. Did graze the shooter a bit. Ernie Kent wondering why, though, he's trailing the play. So Darius Lane goes to the free throw line 70% this season. He was the Big East Rookie of the Week six times this year. Out of Minnesota. Calling the mad bomber from Minnesota, as we've seen already. As that number indicates, he likes to shoot the three. And the one thing about him, he likes to shoot it quickly. One of the fastest releases that I've seen. Doesn't get the roll on the first. He shared Mr. Basketball honors in the state of Minnesota coming out of high school with the former Gopher, Joe Prisbilla, the big center. We spoke with Tommy Amaker yesterday, asked him about Lane, and we asked him, hey, did you expect this? This is his first year of college basketball as he misses on the second. He said, you know what, from practice last year, we did. He was a partial qualifier, so he was allowed to practice, but he just couldn't play in the games. And, and the thing about it, Tommy, is as humble as he is, he has a great eye for talent and understanding it. But there was a period of time earlier in this year that I, the way Lane was playing and shooting the basketball, I think even Tommy would be a little shocked or was shocked at how just well he could shoot the basketball, especially from long range. He's really stepped in in the loss of Gary Saunders. The senior who was dismissed from the team for violating university policy. Timeout. 27-25. Pirates. All over the place. We did not have a super upset yesterday, but perhaps the shoe will fit today for Penn against Illinois. Yes, Gonzaga was a winner against Louisville, but that was not a huge upset. Bradford off the mark. And will this be over the back? Over the back on Illinois? Uh, no, no, the other way around. It's going on. And you know what Bradford is doing today, Jim? He is pump faking on every jump shot. Instead of catching and just releasing, the pump fake is throwing him somewhat out of balance, and he hadn't been able to hit any of them. One and one for Griffin. Yes, Bradford 0 for 4 from the field, shut out. One and one. Looks like right. Griffin fires, hangs it home. I think Bradford upset with himself because he feels he's getting good looks, but he's making his shot much more difficult than it needs to be. Again, Jordan returns for the next possession. Klatsky also back for the Quakers. Isn't it interesting how often you can get a man in in the two platoon system, let him play the offensive end and not the defense. Griffin not a good free throw shooter. Oh, stolen away. Klatsky tried to shuttle the ball over to Jordan. Quick hands, though, stolen away. Yeah, they've been able to do that four or five times already with Jordan. Now here's where Bradford ought to take Jordan one on one. Gives it up. Griffin up and over. Anyway, now they're going to get back to their game, going inside where they have a big advantage, whether it's Cook or Griffin. Under a minute to play in the half. Jordan ball. 
deflected, stolen. Illinois, where McClain does have strong and quick hands. A lot of reach in to make those steals. Ten second differential game clock to shot clock. Boy, why they have, no, nope, there's. Oh, that was close. Exactly, why they have a situation right now that you get the ball out to Bradford and let him go one on one with Jordan. Long rebound to Jordan. Not thinking. Ben could take the last shot, Billy. Yeah, there was a situation where you have Jordan matched up on Bradford. They should have cleared out. Who, who else but Michael Jordan would relish this role to take the last <laughs> shot of a half for a game? Seven seconds. Six, five. Jordan to the corner with two. Kapitanovich with one. Got it at the buzzer. Nice comeback by the University of Pennsylvania when they were in a position to be blown right out of here. They cut 10 points into that Illinois lead that at one time had swelled to 27-12. It's 34-29. Tate rushed that shot. He was intimidated as he went right to the basket and threw it on up. Fletcher off the bounce. And that ends a six-minute drought for Cincinnati. Those are the type of baskets that Cincinnati wants. They don't want to go at the other end and wear down UNC Wilmington. Right now, they're under six minutes to play in the first half in Nashville and Cincinnati, holding the five-point lead. Cincinnati shooting the ball poorly to start, but that could be part of nerves and part of defense by Wilmington. In Birmingham, the game between the Raging Cajuns and Tennessee, there's a timeout there, but Tennessee's volunteers have their hands full today. Well, they've got to bring an attitude. This, this Louisiana team, Raging Cajun, that's how they're playing, with a lot of spice and a lot of fire. Tennessee is primarily a finesse team, and they've got to get down and dirty and start going right at Louisiana. All right, Clark, time to get you back to Buffalo, Seton Hall, and Oregon. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Point Bearcats lead. This is where senior leadership takes its place right now. Right now, take so far. Regis outside for Louisiana. Shea Whiting and then Butler. Jones. Jones inside and a foul. As Whiting took it strong to the hole. Well, anytime you can cause the Tennessee defense to collapse. They haven't done a good job of getting to the open man interior pass. Isaiah Victor picks up his first foul. And that sends Whiting, a junior from Houston, back to the line. Still looking for his second point. He's one for three from the line. And a chance to look at the Solomon Smith Barney game summary. Thomas, uh, the leader, with seven first seven points for Louisiana. Twenty to thirteen, a football score here in Birmingham, where they love the game. Seven twenty-four left in the opening half. And with that zone defense, Jerry Green using uh, his top outside shooters, Woods being one, and he fires. Good rebound by Whiting. And the South are in action today. Clark Kellogg and I have scores and live action coming your way right now. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, everyone. Greg Gumbel. Welcome back to our studios in New York and to Pennzoil at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. Halftime of the Penn Illinois game. The Fighting Illini 34-29. Looked like it might be a blowout early on, but those Quakers came back. They certainly did. Both teams have threatened to make my all spurt ability team. And we they, know how important they, but that But they is. haven't done it consistently <laughs> enough. Michael Jordan has spearheaded that run to end the half for Penn, and that's why they're within five. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in the South region, first round action in Birmingham, Alabama. The Raging Cajuns of Louisiana leading Tennessee by a score of 22-13. Just under six and a half to play in the first half. Let's take you to the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center. Dick Enberg and James Worthy. Louisiana Ragin Cajuns leading Tennessee. A surprise here in Birmingham, 22-13. The Ragin Cajuns, formerly uh, southwestern Louisiana, changed their name in their centennial year. And they got seven 
quick points from Lonnie Thomas, their 6'8 junior center, and they've held off Tennessee. A very cold start for the Volunteers. The zone defense has frustrated Tennessee, unable to hit from outside. The Raging Cajuns start out with a man-to-man -man on Harris and frustrated him. Then they went through the zone, and Tennessee has not been able to penetrate it. We just saw another monster dunk by Lonnie Thompson trailing the break. He's on fire with nine points. 11-point lead, the biggest of the game. Here's Harris. They need him to score. And an offensive rebound to Higgins. Back out to Woods. Tennessee with its winningest year. 24 victories this year for Jerry Green. But they lost to South Carolina in the first game of the SEC tournament and the foul inside. I believe ticketed was uh, number 30, Lonnie Thomas. Oh, Lonnie Thomas has been airborne. You're going to see Lonnie Thomas trailing the break right there. Then he comes up uncontested. Tennessee's transition defense poor as the Raging Cajuns start to get a little transition game of themselves. Thomas with his first foul sends C.J. Black to the line for the Vols, the senior from Chattanooga, averaging just under nine a game. And that's his fifth point. Vincent Yarbrough returns and replaces Terrence Woods. They may want to explore C.J. Black down in the post. He has good ball pump fakes and usually gets people up in the air so he should be able to get to the line with those pump fakes. Black four for four from the line, six in the game, nine point Louisiana lead. Five and a half to go, first half here in Birmingham. Very patient offense for the Raging Cajuns, pass the ball around the perimeter and then looking for Shea Whiting. You said it. His fourth point. And Louisiana back up by 11. Look at the collapsing defense when the ball comes inside. Yarbrough hit his first three, but it's been full tense. Isaiah Victor, and he is denied by Thomas, but Thomas may have picked up the foul. Let's see. Yes, it is Thomas who has picked up his second. Well, there's a pass from Butler after he drives to the bucket. Nice shot by Wyden. And here's the defense. I think the key for Louisiana Lafayette is no freebies this afternoon. They're going to make Tennessee earn them all. So Yarbrough at the line. Tennessee Volunteers with their hands full in the first round of the South. Louisiana leading it by a score of 26 to 16. Meanwhile, in the East region in Buffalo, Seton Hall leading the Ducks of Oregon 32 31, 305 to play in the first half there. And in Nashville, first round action in the South, UNC Wilmington trading the Bearcats of Cincinnati, the number two seed, 22 to 13, coming up on two minutes to play. We remind you, our next round of games features Butler against fifth seed Florida in the East and Temple, the number two seed in the East against Lafayette. UNLV plays Tulsa and Utah State against UConn in the South. Thanks for joining us here on Pennzoil at the half. We'll send you back to Winston-Salem for the second half right after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. It's third, knocked out of bounds. And Oregon will retain possession. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gungle, Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news and all the scores and highlights, plus a live look in at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's coming up. Pennzoil at the half. Jump shot does not go down. And a personal foul assessed. Be on the outside. First time he gets the basketball, if it's not in an, in an instinctive area of the floor, right now we'll see if, which hand he dribbles with the most. There's his left hand. See, now he's protecting that initially. That's the first read. But when he gets into a bang-bang situation, now if somebody gets close to him, he'll use that hand instinctively. Seen Hall started off the game red hot from the field. Oh. Oh. down by Dellinger. Not an alley-oop, but it works just the same. That was a missed shot from the right side of the floor. Dallenbear putting up nice minutes for Tommy Amaker's squad. Four points, six rebounds, three blocks, and now Ernie Kent 